Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about repairing damaged threads and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Quite often on our boards, you'll come across the situation where the thread that holds a bolt in has been stripped out. This can happen because there was a bolt stuck in there and you had to drill it out, or that as you're tightening the bolt, you'll feel that the thread gets stripped and the bolt just starts spinning. In that case, you're gonna to need to fix it. There's a couple of ways you can go to repair a thread depending on the situation. So if you imagine this is an engine block and we had the thread in here. Then say there's a bolt in here and there's a certain torque spec you're trying to get to, say 70 Newton meters, and as you're turning it, the bolt just keeps spinning, never gets any tighter the torque wrench never clicks, and that's because this thread is just stripped out. This happens a lot where you've got a steel bolt into aluminium, and particularly if that aluminium has been quite hot at some point in its life. So what it means by having the thread stripped is that all these fine grooves have just broken away from the casting of the block. Now your options for fixing this depends really on what that bolt was attaching. Probably the simplest way is, say for example this was a six millimeter bolt, you could drill it out to about 7.5 millimeters around there, and then tap it out to an eight millimeter thread, then put an eight millimeter bolt in. This obviously depends on there being enough metal either side to do that. And it also depends on that eight millimeter bolt being able to fit through whatever was being attached to the block. If that's a cylinder head, it means you have to drill the cylinder head as well. But if it's just something like a, a P-clip to hold something on, not such a big deal. Now, there's plenty of reasons why you wouldn't want to do that. Some situations, you don't have enough spare metal. Other situations, you can't drill a hole through the thing that you're bolting on to the cylinder block with, or whatever the, the thread is in. Another reason is if this is one of, say, 10 holes clamping something large on, you're going to have nine bolts with a 10 millimeter head on them and one bolt with a 13 millimeter head, for example. So down the track, maintenance is gonna be a little bit tricky too. It also makes it harder to get an even clamping force across all the bolts. If you have 10 bolts holding something down and they've got a particular torque sequence and a certain torque spec, then if you set them all to 40 Newton meters, you've got 10 bolts, nine of which are six mil, one of which is eight mil, it's not gonna be an even clamping force either at that torque setting. To solve all these problems, you get a thing called a thread repair kit. Plenty of different brands of these. There's like Helicoil, Time Cert, Recoil, all different ones, and everyone you know, has their favorite. The idea here is that you drill away the damaged thread, like you would have in the first step of putting a larger bolt in, except then what you do is you tap a thread in here, so very similar again. Then you insert the, the repair kit, which is just a sort of an insert. That new insert that goes in restores the thread back to its original diameter. This then allows you to put the original bolt back in or a new one of the same diameter. All right, so let's head over. I'll show you one of these kits and we'll go and put one into an outboard here. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna use one of the holes here from an exhaust cover that goes on here. You can see here with this exhaust cover, there's probably enough meat here to drill this out and step up to an eight millimeter bolt, but you still have the issues of the torque settings and having one bolt with a different head, which isn't great for maintenance. The kit I'm gonna be using today is a time cert kit from Worth. The thread inserts for this kit look like this. So this is the thread on the outside that screws into the block itself. Then there's a six millimeter thread on the inside and a little flange at the top. I've measured the bolt that came out of the hole and it's a six millimeter bolt with a standard one millimeter thread pitch. And I can check this kit's right for it by simply just winding it into the thread repair insert. So I know they're a good match for each other. In this kit, you get four tools. There's a drill bit of a very specific size for this kit. Then there's a countersink bit for that flange at the top of the thread repair. There's then a tap for putting a thread into the hole, and then there's a tool for inserting the insert. So step one is to drill the hole out. The first thing I'd do before starting is just have a look how deep the actual thread is on this. 
you know, by putting, this is just an old tungsten, but I can pop it in the hull and there is a bottom to it. Some bolts go all the way through, maybe into a water jacket, needs sealant, all sorts of different situations. But in this case, it's a closed hole and it is exactly that deep. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark the drill bit just so that I don't end up over drilling it too deep into the block. So this is how deep I'm gonna drill this. Around here you can see there's probably loads of metal to drill deeper and put a longer bolt in if I wanted to, but it's just something to be aware of and to be careful with. The drill bit that comes with the kit has a square on the end here so it can go into a T-piece. And to be honest with you, this aluminium is so soft, if I take this hole here, for example, I could actually drill this whole thing out by hand. That was actually pretty easy with a T-piece, but I'm actually gonna drill this one out now just with a normal cordless drill. If you wanted to, you could put a little bit of cutting oil on the drill bit, but to be honest with you, it's such a small hole to drill into very soft aluminium. By leaving the chips dry, it's actually gonna make it easier for me to blow them out afterwards. Another thing that can be really helpful when you're drilling is if you've got a friend who can sort of look along the drill this way, make sure you're, you're sort of in the right angle here, then you can look down, make sure you're in the right angle here, that you're going in square. What we have now is the hole drilled out to the diameter of the bit that came with the kit, so there's no thread inside that hole at all anymore. Next thing I need to do is take this countersinking bit and just countersink a millimetre or so just enough for the flange on the top of the insert to sit in flush with the block. Once again, you could do this just with the T-piece probably. I'm gonna use a drill. Remember, this one's only going about a millimeter or so. Now here you can see hopefully that the top of it's been countersunk slightly. Next tool from the kit you use is the tap that comes with the kit. I'm just gonna put a little bit of grease on it just to hold the chips in here. As with the drilling we did, it's really important that you tap reasonably square. The tap will tend to follow the hole anyway, so if you've drilled it straight, the tap's likely to follow it straight as well, but just try and be careful to get it, you know, as plumb as you can. So I'm gonna start a few turns. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of a backward turn just to scoop the chips that I've cut out of the metal into the channel inside the tab. Then keep going forward. There's no great difficulty to tapping threads like this. The tool does all the work. All right, I can feel that's getting hard to turn now because the taps hit the bottom of the hole. So all we need to do is wind it back out. You'll see here all the chips from the block, well many of them anyway, are in the grooves on the tap, but we still need to really clean this hole out very thoroughly now. To clean it out, I'm just gonna use a little bit of brake cleaner, just because of the grease, and then some compressed air. Now here we have a hole that's drilled, countersunk, and tapped. Next thing we need to do is select an insert that's the right length for the amount of thread going into the block. In this case, I'm just gonna put the shorter one in. The final tool we're gonna to be using is the insert tool from the kit, which essentially is the same thread as the bolt that's going in, but it's actually got a slightly square profile to it. I'm not sure how important it is. I'll explain something about what locks these inserts in though on the board, and perhaps that's something this tool does help with. Because we're going to be using the tool to put the insert in, then pulling the tool out on its own, I'm going to put a bit of oil on the tool. Then thread the insert onto the tool. And then the insert into the block. Now the insert itself went into the block very easily, but we keep winding with the tool until the tool has gone right through the insert. As you get to the bottom of the insert, winding with the tool, you'll feel the pressure on the tool increase quite significantly. Bit of a turn, and then pull it back out. And that there is the finished product. I could have countersunk this a little bit less, but better having it slightly below the surface than having it protruding, because obviously the cover won't sit flush then. Now we can take our original Honda bolt that came out and wind it into the insert. 
and it'll be as strong as the original thread was. Before we wrap up, I'll just show you quickly on the board how this sort of final locking stage works. Exaggerated drawing, but the idea is the lower part of the thread, so if this is the block here, and the inserts coming in, it isn't quite as deep, the thread at the bottom here. So as the tool comes down and down, when it gets to here, the tool's actually wider than this bottom section, which then pushes the bottom of it out in here to lock into the block. And that's what makes it stay there when you wind the tool back out. All right, well, thanks for watching. I hope this video helps you if you've got a damaged thread that needs repairing. I definitely think you are better off for a number of reasons we talked about putting a thread repair kit in rather than just tapping to a larger bolt, but there are a couple of options. Oh, and in case you're wondering, yes, I'm wearing a new hoodie that's now available. Not because it's cold, just because I came into the workshop and there weren't any t-shirts here, and coincidentally, this arrived today, so lucky. All right, well, take care and I'll catch you next week. See ya. Thank you.